Hello, hello. It's been quite a while. I lost track of time and the next thing I knew it was a month since my last video. So I've been kind of in the cleaning mode, going through things I like, don't like. And of course, I was going through my brushes, culling brushes I haven't used in a while. And I came across a bunch of brushes that I just keep using or they're sentimental. They were one of the first brushes I got and I've been using them very consistently ever since. So I decided to make a all-time favorites um, brushes video. So some of these are really old, some of these are very recent, but these are all brushes that I keep reaching for. Now, I know I say that a lot about a lot of brushes, but these are special even among the ones that I say that I really love and use all the time. So, oops, where's my list? Looking at my notes because some of these are not in the right order. Okay, so we'll start with this side. This is a Koyudo, Koyudo Fua Fua. Um, Fua Fua means fluffy and this is a powder brush. This is the first brush that I got that was a Fude and it got me started down this rabbit hole. So this is the brush that started it all and I got it because it was so pretty. And I got more Fude brushes because this one was so awesome. So this one definitely belongs here. This is the Bisciotto BFD01, a foundation brush. More recent edition, but it's been with me for a while. This has definitely been featured before. This is a Sue Devitt eye base brush. It's made of Kolinsky. It's been long discontinued. When I found out that Sue Devitt was going out of business. I think I purchased three or four of these. So I have three or four of these total, but I have two on rotation. They haven't given up on me yet. So I haven't had to pull out any of the replacements. This is the MK1. At the time I bought it, I didn't know the MK1. Oh, sorry. This is the MK1 from Chikoda. At the time I bought this brush, I didn't know that it was limited edition and apparently now it's been discontinued. However, the MK2, um, the only difference I think is the handle design. This one has peonies on it. But the MK2 is still available. Now, some people will say that the MK1 and MK2 are different brushes. I don't feel that there's a significant enough difference to warrant saying that they're different brushes. And for more detail, you can refer to my video where I compare a bunch of Chukuhodo powder brushes. If you enter down to the search bar, or it should pop right up on my channel. This is the Sonia G Mini Cheek. This is a newer edition, but I've really come to love it because it's so nice and versatile for a lot of things. So that's why this pretty new addition to my collection has made it in here. This is a Koyudo BP018. This one has also been with me a long time. And it's another great um, cheek brush. That I, this is a cheek brush. It's a brush that I think would be well received by everybody new or veteran to Fude. This is a special edition of the Koyudo BP029. This is a large eye brush. Uh, it's a special edition because most of the BP series have this white handle. This has kind of this, you definitely can't pick it out, but it has this lacquered glittery green, almost like a beetle shell to the handle. But the brush head is the same as the BP029. This is a large eye brush that I just love using. And of course, I have to put another Kolinsky eye brush in here because I'm absolutely insane for Kolinsky. This is the Hokodo WS1 um, eye brush. And I'll show you all the ways in which I use this. You can, as a preview, you can see there's that unique shape and I'll talk more about why I love this brush so much and it has to do with this unique shape. This is the Chikuhodo T8. It's one of my favorites, if not my absolute favorite among a bunch of pencil brushes and I'll discuss why a little bit later. 
If you want more detail about this brush, you can um, watch my video, the overview of the Chikoto Takumi series. I was so mad because two days after I filmed that video on the complete overview of the Takumi series, Chikoto released two more brushes into the Takumi line. So unfortunately that title is kind of false now, but we'll kind of ignore it. And last but not least, this is the Hokodo GS2. I have a full blog post devoted to this brush, which I will try to remember to link in the description. And of course, I always have an eyelash comb. So I'm going to be doing my makeup of these brushes and talking through how I use them and more about why I love them so much. So starting with, actually no, we're going to start with under eye concealer. I've been doing mostly just under eye concealer nowadays instead of a full face of makeup because of mask wearing. Normally I just conceal under my eyes, across the forehead, a little blemish there, <laughs> and I don't do the rest of my face. So this is the first time I am doing full face makeup in a long time. But because of that, I usually start with under eye concealer. So this is the eye base brush. As you can see, a thick paddle, reasonably large, Nice snap to it. And I feel bad taunting you guys with a brush that's been discontinued, but Takeda makes custom brushes. You can always, you know, ask them if they can make a brush like this for you. But this brush is, I have so many of them because I, it's so versatile. Kalinsky can be used with cream products, which is why I'm gonna use it for concealer right now. And it's also great for blending eyeshadow. So, Eye base, I think, was used to refer to the eye base you put on top of your eyes, which is primer or any like color corrector like the MAC paint pots. So this was designed to like really spread it around and blend the blend the edges of it out evenly. But because Kalinsky is so strong. I often use it as a overall blender for my eyeshadow as well, because if I have a line that ends up being too harsh, I'll just take this brush and kind of wipe the edge away until it fades and diffuses into um, an acceptable result. So I'm pretty sure I've also featured this brush in some other videos of mine. Just look for the sky blue handle in the thumbnails. It's pretty distinctive. But yes, like I was saying, awesome brush. And let's pre-conceal this one a little bit. Oh yeah, and Kalinsky is super easy to wash, so I don't have to worry about um, product getting built in, making the brush junky and all that. I got this brush because it was so highly recommended on Gaia, the non-blondes blog, and she's passed away recently, so the brush now has extra meaning to it. It reminds me of her who well, her blog pretty much got me started into Hakuhodo and all the other wonderful Japanese brushes that I have now. So sorry to start the video off with a little bit of a downer. So there's my under eyes concealed and it's been really dry here and the corners of my mouth have been tearing. So I'm going to conceal the redness here as well. It's been so long since I've done a video, I forgot I need a full-size mirror, but it's okay. Because it's simple, I'll make do with a tiny mirror. So that's this, very versatile as a concealer brush and an eye brush. And I've already said a bunch of times, that stuff you see on the handle, that's nail polish I put on there so I can identify which ones I've used, which ones are clean, which ones are dirty. So like one of them's gold, one of them's is like tarnished silvery color, and then one of them's actually plain. Okay. Take a little more. And then this is just from the usual little brush palette I have. And I'm gonna pinpoint and conceal some stuff. That one's great for covering areas, but it doesn't do pinpoint concealing well. For that, I like the Koyudo BP-036, which I've shown way too many times on this channel, so it didn't make it in here. Okay, 
Next, I'm going to go in with my foundation, and I've already showed you this before. Because I've already concealed under my eyes, I won't need quite as much throughout my cheeks because I already dragged it down. My nose has been really discolored, though. Too much time in the sun and not enough time spent <laughs> reapplying sunscreen. Oops. I always make the mistake of not putting sunscreen on, on cloudy days, which is actually when you need sunscreen more because of the reflection back and forth between the atmosphere and the ground. But I'm lazy, so now I'm paying the price for it with a bunch of uh, hyperpigmentation and discoloration. So. so I really like this foundation brush. My sister doesn't agree with me. I took all my foundation brushes and tested them, all of them on her in one go, and then had her rank them. Her ranking was not significantly different from mine, but this is probably my second or third favorite foundation brush after the Koyudo, um, geez. The little short one that's white and soft. I'm blanking on the name right now. The Koyudo Fupa 01 soft version of the white hair. That's my absolute favorite foundation brush, but I'm not gonna bring that one out because that one's definitely been on my channel too much. So this is my second favorite. Well, third favorite. Second favorite is technically the Clarisonic, but that's not a Fude, so. This is my second favorite Fude foundation brush. And I love it because it's so dense and I forgot to show it. You see if this round shape acts kind of like a beauty blender sponge where no matter how you blend it, the edges are going to be diffused and you're not gonna have anything harsh that you need to worry about. And it feels almost like a puff. The downside is because it's so incredibly dense, if you have very, very, very sensitive skin, like my sister has dry skin, so she's more sensitive. She says that in certain parts of her face, she can feel a prickly sensation. So even though this brush works really well for me, that's one consideration you might want to take into account is that because it's so dense, it might feel prickly. Yes, it's an absolute beast when it comes to speed and blending ability, but it might not be the most comfortable for you. Of course, it's gorgeous. It's much prettier than the Koyudo Fupa 01. And I have to say the looks is one of the reasons why it ranks second, but the Koyudo Fupa 01 is just the absolute best brush to me and to her and to some other people I've gifted it to. So I didn't want to be too repetitive is why I'm showing you number two foundation brush instead of number one. And I've also used this in another video, so you can definitely see it in action some more. And it'll be evident because I always have a thumbnail of all the brushes at once. Okay. Next one is a very special brush. This is the Koyudo Fuwa Fuwa, F-U-W-A, F-U-W-A. This is a powder brush. The powder brush that started it all and made me one of CD Japan's best customers. So this is different cuts of wood that have been uh, assembled, glued, and kind of like compressed until it's taken a shape. It's called Parquet Tree, I think. Parquet Tree, Market Tree, one of the two. But it's this pattern that you make out of different pieces and as you can see it's held up fantastically and this thing is old very very old it has shed a hair once in a while but i mean nothing significant actually i think it just tossed one up right now <laughs> but as you can see this round powder brush it's fantastic so this one is definitely an all-over powder brush for me um, if I'm in a really, really big hurry, I can actually use this to apply blush and bronzer. So I'll use it, I'll use a separate brush to apply foundation and then just powder over it. And then as you can see, because of that round dome shape, small enough to apply blush, just don't go crazy with it like that. You have to just kind of tap it on and go lightly and keep your emotions controlled. So it's definitely um, definitely one of my favorite brushes. I may be squeezing too many uses out of it because at a 
point in the beginning, this was one of my only brushes. So I tried to get as many uses as I could out of it and they worked. I just have other brushes I prefer using now. So in a pinch, this brush can do quite a bit. And then how I use this brush is I kind of press and then I buff, press and buff. I know it looks like I'm just going around in circles everywhere, but I'm really pushing and then sweeping, pushing and then sweeping, pushing and sweeping, kind of this C shape. So this technique actually does two things and you can only do it with a dense powder brush like this. If you've heard of lymph drainage, um, this is something I learned from working in a clinic that does lymph drainage for people who've had something like throat cancer and they usually have a section here that a scar that causes lymph from flowing back down. So then the massage is done in this C motion, pushing the fluid towards the temple back out the neck. So that's something I learned there that I've also applied to my makeup routine and it helps makes my face um, look slimmer. And it's definitely something you can use with very thick, fat, dense powder brushes like this. So yeah, face massage brush too. Okay, next up, I think I will do contour. So this is the Sonia G mini cheek. Oh, I haven't been discussing any of the hairs at all, I'm sorry. I did mention this one is Kolinsky. This one is Psychoho Goat, which is the highest grade of goat hair you can get without breaking the bank. And this is also Psychoho Goat. The one that breaks the bank is called Saibi Koho, and it's a cut above, but you really don't need to make that price jump. So this is dyed and undyed goat hair. Sonia did it intentionally because dyed goat hair has more texture and picks up and distributes the powder differently. As you can see, it's a very small brush and it has this nice contoured profile and you have a good flat size to work with. So what you can do with this is, well, a bunch of things. So for one, apply eye base with it. So say you have a tacky primer and you need to set it with loose powder, set your under eye, definitely can do that, around the nose, mouth. Um, what I like to use it for is mostly contour because it can get under the cheek here, really sculpt it in and it can get down the nose and kind of work the socket a bit. So that's what I'm going to be doing with my contour powder. Jeez, I remember how to orient to the camera. <laughs> Pathetic. Okay. So what I like to do with this one, and you can see how thin it is. So it's definitely applicable for highlight as well. I don't like to shade with this brush. I guess for the one thing it's not good for is shading under the jawline and down the neck because it's not quite large enough for that. Okay. And, but that's a weakness I'm willing to overlook. And I'm using this in the upward licking motion. So I start underneath the cheekbone and I kind of flick it up like that. And then to do the nose, I'm only gonna load it up on here. How I loaded it up for the cheeks was I loaded it up all along here. Now I'm just gonna go back and forth in the pan of the tip. Remove a little bit and start doing my nose. Good. And even if you have um, small lid space, like I guess mine would be considered medium. I have a small mobile lid space, but lid space wise, I do okay. I like to take it under the eyebrow along that orbital socket kind of chisel it out just a little bit. So you can see how bright this side is. And I set it, I recess it just a little bit. So then when I put bright colors on it, it kind of adds dimension without me really need to do as much work. 
The shades I'm using for contour, I'm pretty sure it's the Kevin Kwan medium shade. Yes, this is the medium sculpting powder. Um, if you have the American Sephora, it's the To Go Duo. I love the highlight color in this too. For reference, I am somewhere between NC15 to NC20, probably in MAC. So I'm probably closer to MAC NC20 now because I've been in the sun a little bit. And I use Kevin Aquan's uh, XX, SX07 Sensual Skin Enhancer as my daily foundation. And then I'm so sorry. The under eye concealer I use is the mix. So this is a this is actually a concealer designed for contouring from the Sam. And then I combined it with a very light color from Lancome, the waterproof under eye concealer. So the shades I use are kind of all over the place. I don't like using this one for under the eye because I consider it just a tad too orangey. And that contour color has a touch of almost like shadowy gray to it that makes it um, work on the under eye. For me anyways. But something that Kevin and Kwan does well is their contour powder has a lot of shades mixed into it. So it works for a variety of skin tones. They have a light one too, but that one's too light for me. I think it's intended for the super pale redheads. I don't know if they have a deep contour powder. So this is the weakness I'm talking about. It's a little too small and a little not stiff enough for doing under my chin and jawline like I like to do. It's definitely what I would consider too small for say doing the neck. So if you really want that precision, yeah, this brush works. I just prefer a stiffer brush for if I'm working on the body, probably because I'm not as gentle and I press a lot harder. And as you can see, it really splays, like really splays. Good face brush, not so much on the rest, but very versatile. And then as I showed a little earlier, it can be used for highlight and then it can also be used for highlight down the nose. If you're gonna get one brush from Sonia G, I would say that might be the brush to get. It's very unique because I've never seen a small flat brush like this. I've seen some from Hakuhodo where they're like much thinner, like they're actually not as fluffy and not as um, densely packed. So the Hakuhodo, I think it's the 122 or something like that. They look like this. This one, I like the fluff, so. And I don't think I've ever seen a brush like this. But of course, we're talking about the crazy brush collector. So she knows what exists. She knows what doesn't. She created a brush that she thought should exist and didn't exist yet. Okay, not done. I'm going to move on to cheeks. This is the A. Uh, actually, no. I'm going to do bronzer first. This is the MK1, as I told you in the beginning. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about this. I'm just going to use it for bronzer. If you want more detail about this brush, I did a pretty in-depth video of it somewhere on my channel. So go check that out. And I'm gonna use this bronzer from, from NARS. This is Laguna. I'm just tapping it, tapping it, coating it. And I'm being so violent with it because it kind of kicks the powder around and distributes it. So I'm gonna bronze up the middle of my face because as you can see, I've been lazy of sunscreen. <laughs> Only do my face and like the lower part of my neck. I haven't been matching the same fervor of sunscreening with my shoulders. Big brush, covers a lot. Effortless, fast, super soft. It's like if someone took like a felt blanket and like whoosh across your face. Not felt blanket, what are the, the fuzzy microfiber ones? Can't think. And this is one of those brushes where you don't want to stop using it even though you're far done with applying your makeup, you just want to keep running it all over your face. And I would say this is true of almost all the Chikuhodo um, powder brushes. The Z9 a little less so because it's a little more springy and less of this like fluff, soft rebounds, uh, rebound. 
Uh, the Z1 would probably be the most comparable if you don't want this paddle shape in a squirrel uh, powder brush. And I forgot to mention this is gray squirrel hair. I am so out of practice. Whew. Okay. This is a Koyudo BP018. This is gray squirrel paddle brush. As you can see, it has this nice distinctive shape to it. I really liked my shaped brushes because they allow me to do so much with them. So this brush is um, almost an exact clone of the BP016. The BP016 was another one of my first Fude brushes and another one that's well loved. Definitely has been shown in the video here. That one is goat. This is the squirrel version of it. It might be ever so slightly shorter, but it's not a huge difference. So it's a medium sized cheek brush. Of course, it has that nice fine point. Can be used for highlight. Down the nose, a little trickier, but hey, if you really, really were in a pinch and had to pinch it, go down. But I'm gonna be using like a normal person for blush. So I'm actually gonna use this Burberry eyeshadow color. This is rose pink. And then it's more pigmented as an eyeshadow, but I'm not too worried because Squirrel will apply such a sheer um, layer of color that you can build as you wish. And it's a really pretty pink color, at least on my skin for blush. And then what I was doing is I was just tapping it in. As you can see, it kind of has this diamond shape. I've been using this surface for the blush. This would also make a good powder brush for those that have very sensitive skin and want a small target powder brush. So as you can see where I'm putting it right now, it would fit into the under eye and of course, target powdering the T-zone. I'm gonna go back into my Kevin Aquan duo and I'm gonna apply highlight with just the tip. And because it's squirrel, it doesn't cause much kick up for a more powdery formula or soft formula. I consider this, what is it? Candlelight, a more soft formula. And I also like to widen my forehead a bit. So I'm gonna apply it on the outer temples. Most people I think just highlight above the brow bone. But because like how my face is shaped, I want to put more volume on the top compared to the bottom, which is why I do this. And then for that, I use one of the diagonal diamond sides because it gives me a larger area. So I use the other side of the brush, not the side I put blush on. I use the other clean side for applying the highlighter to the area. Okay. This is the Koyudo BP029. If you have one of your own or if you've been looking at it, this was a special edition of it. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this has, I don't, I think you can just ever so slightly see that green shimmer lacquer, but it's really pretty. I don't know if they're ever gonna make it again, but I'm glad I snapped this one up when I did. So this is almost like a very small version of this brush for your eyes. And how fitting that I'm gonna be using the same color on my eyes. I'm gonna apply this like this. I'm also gonna save this as a overall blending brush for later. I really like to use um, the blush that I use throughout my eyelid a little bit because it kind of causes a cohesive effect. Of course, I don't do it with the super 
bright blushes if they're like bright lavender orange or red but for like soft pinks like this i really like doing this and then i'm just closing my eyes and wrapping this around so there's a little bit of messiness and it gets on my bottom lid too so definitely a large eye brush the bp029 is the large version if you're looking for the medium version i think I think the medium version is the O33. So I really like large eye brushes. You don't have to get this one. So if you're looking for a more reasonable size brush, I think you'll like that one. But this works well for me for all over the eyes. And I'm using the tip now just to do my outer corner. Intensify it just a little bit. Makes a good blending brush, that's for sure. And because it's gray squirrel, it's super soft. You can work around your eye area with impunity. You won't feel any poking or scratchiness. Unlike the next brush. So my love affair of Kalinsky continues with this Hokodo WS1. Wait, let me check. Yep, WS1. So another very shaped brush. Most paddle brushes are kind of like, more like this, they have a more rounded shape. This one has this almost triangle shape to it, which gives you this surface plus this nice, almost knife edge. So what I like to do with this is, well, for one, you can always use the tip for smudging out pencil liner, but because this is pretty much eye shaped, I stick it here and I drag it across. And it's so easy to get a nice shape. So I drag it across, here's the fat part, and then I take off the pressure and the tip touches my inner eye. So it's like, so I start with the tip down on the outer corner of my eye, press down and then up. And that just shades it very effortlessly. And I'm just going over with the edge to blend ever so slightly because it has a little bit of pigment left on it. And I'm gonna do the other eye. Cat eye it a little bit. I'm actually going to go back in with the brush, the BP029 I use for the pink, and then blend that tiny bit. A little bit here. And that's done. So that was this brush. So Kolinsky is not the best choice for everybody because it can feel a little pokey. It is one of the more stiffer hairs and that and more durable hairs. That's why it can handle cream uh, products like this. Um, this can definitely use, be used for pinpoint concealing and then blending it out. But I prefer this one because it has that fluffy shape so it diffuses the edges more. This one you would have to work a little bit more to use it for doing concealer. So that's why this is this and this is for eyeshadow. Realistically, I could do my entire look with this brush alone but I want to put more brushes into the video. So this is definitely a all-in-one go brush. This is absolutely one of my favorites. This is the Hokoto GS2. So it's a little bit hard to tell, but it's paddle shaped and it's shaped almost like a round bullet brush at the tip. And then, so if you have small mobile lid space like me, this is good for applying color just to that area. And it's almost like a smaller version of the MAC 217 or 227, 217, yeah, 217. If it was made of Canadian squirrel hair, the Canadian squirrel hair is fantastic because, sorry if you hear my dryer. Um, where was I? 
stupid dryer. Anyways, the Canadian squirrel is fantastic because it doesn't fluff out as much as the go in the Mac 217 does, and it's much more controllable for me. It doesn't work as well as a blending brush, but if you're doing this sort of layering makeup like I do, it's very easy to just like start with the lash line and then like blend up. I'll show you what I mean in a second. I have to check out the addiction brush. I kind of ducked out of food day for a while because grad school got a little crazy, but hey, I'm back now. And I'm doing a lot of ketchup. There's been so much added, but I just went a little crazy and ordered the entirety of the Chikuhodo, what is it? The Honor Series, the KZ, but hey. Money well spent, I would think. So I'm gonna definitely do a review once that gets there. It's on back order for like one or one to three weeks. So it'll get here when it gets here. I'll play with it for a couple weeks and then I'll report back on it. Like honestly, I've never been so excited about an entire line of brushes until I saw that. It's like, wow, I have never ordered one set of, or one series of brushes in one go before. But that was one of the ones that made me drop all of my self-control and go for the whole thing. That would, that would make a lot of sense. Yeah. Well, actually, no, the Worker Pro, let me think. I'll grab the Worker Pro after I'm done doing my makeup and do a comparison. I think it might be actually wider and thicker than this one. Oh yes, definitely. I will be comparing those brushes, to, um, the Honor series, the KZ brushes to the S series as well as the Takumi series. So this is kind of what I meant by I like, it's a good mobile lid brush. And I don't know if you know this, but I was kind of like working my way up a little bit. So as I was blending, I hadn't added more product to it. I was actually wiping on the back of my hand. I kind of like blended it out. So then that gives the eyes a bit of dimension. Yeah, it was the wrong move to go on Instagram a couple days ago because I saw Christy posted a picture of those and I ordered them like right there. Wrong move, stay off Instagram. And I got smudged a bit on the inside of my eye. Oh, wrong brush, I'm going for a base brush. Smudged a bit on the inside of my eye. I'm gonna clean that up, wipe it off. Probably go in with a little bit of concealer re-clean it up. How does the Canadian score? Um, I don't know if your question um, of regarding does the Canadian squirrel brush compare with the Surat Classic Large, are you talking about the hair quality or the shape? Because if you're talking about shape, the WS1 is actually closer to the Surat Large Classic Eye Brush in shape and size actually. Uh, but the hair, like the Canadian squirrel on all of the brushes are fantastic. Oh, this, the shape of this one is completely different because this one has a very round contour shape all around. It, the classic, especially if you like to shape it when you're drawing it like I do, takes on a very, well, that pointed almost triangle trapezoidy shape. Yeah, I think I might go a little more intense with this. So you see this harsh harsh edge? This is what I'm talking about that I am going to blend out with the Koyudo 022. 022, 029. So get rid of that sucker. And the shade I'm using is Urban Decay's Busted. It's kind of this burgundy brownish color. So it goes well with the pink that I'm using. I'm gonna go here. Okay. And I'm gonna remove it more. 
And this is another um, all-in-one brush that you can use for your entire eye look. I just prefer to have multiple because I can. Now, dig into the socket a little bit. And even though I'm like really pressing it in there, like you can really see the deformation in the indent, but because it's Canadian squirrel, it's super soft. Do a little more blending. Okay. And then I think I'm gonna do my liner before I get move on to the last brush, which I'm going to be using to do just ever so slight bit of smudging and um, inner corner highlight. So pretty simple makeup today, not too many brushes. Just tight lining with this Clinique Quick Liner. I normally do it a lot faster in a different way, but it looks kind of freaky on camera, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that usual technique. So tight lining is you line in between the lashes or on the waterline underneath the lashes. And make sure lashes look fuller and your eyes look bigger. Okay, I'm going to put some on the outside of my lash line, so about where my um, outer lashes end, like that, just a smidge. And then I'm going to use this. This is the Chikohodo T8 in the Takumi series. Psychoho Goat, very, very, un almost unusually pointy um, pencil brush. And that's what makes this one pretty unique and a standout in my collection. Most of them have a more rounded tip, but this one has like such a sharp one that I think it gives it extra function. So I'm gonna use this to gently blend out my liner. Otherwise, for this type of thing, I would use a square lip brush, like a very fine detail brush for this, but because this brush can handle it, I'm going to use this one. I actually want to raise the line on this one a little bit more. I just had it. Where did it go? Did it roll off the table? I didn't hear it. Oh, there it is. What I'm actually doing now is lining a little bit on top of the eyelid. Actually, now let's just go for full eyeliner because why the heck not? Haven't done this in a long time. Being at the scene, Beauty Beautylish has added a brush comb to their site. Um, I personally don't own a brush comb, so I mean, hmm. I have to think about that. There's a reason why I haven't gotten them because I don't really think they're uh, necessary. And I'll speak more about that in a bit after I'm done with this tricky part on my eyes. It's nice if you want to have accessories for your brushes like a very nice brush stand or a very nice, um, shoot, um, washing towel or a very nice brush soap.
But as far as brush combs go, I mean, this is kind of like a very small brush comb. This brushes your eyelash hair. Same thing. It's just smaller and you'd have to work your way around. <laughs> so. <laughs> Same thing here. Like, of course, when you're brushing, you start at the tip and you go towards the end. But, hey, if you want to buy it, more power to you. Of course. Um... I don't think the brush hairs in Fude are, are, even the powder brushes are long enough to get tangled. So I don't think unless you like really mangle your brushes when you wash them that you need to comb them out and straighten them out. Okay. Now we are done with the eyes. What I'm actually going to do is go over that dark color a little bit and soften the liner ever so slightly. I'm sorry, earlier I said I was going to grab some brush to compare, what was it, the worker two? To compare with something. The memory of a goldfish. Because I don't, I don't think that one is essentially the GS02 or the GS2. I think they're different enough in shape that you can't call it uh, the same brush in a different hair. Okay, and then for a little bit of highlight for the eyes, I am going to use this brush again with the tip. This is the Hokudo. WS5, no, WS1, this is w, WS1, god, yes, no. Yes, WS1 with this, your highlight. And using the tip. This one has a slight icy, pinky, golden -y tone to it, which will go well with the cinnamony golden eyeshadow I used as the base earlier. And then as you can see, nice precision. I can place it exactly where I want it. Like even though it's a big brush, there's so many angles and ways, points to use it with. It's honestly not as intimidating as it looks. I originally got this brush because it looks so weird, but I ended up really liking it. I wouldn't say this would be a brush I would give to a beginner though, because um, there are some brushes that are good to give to beginners. So for example, the GS2, the BP01A, the BP016, the goat hair version of this, because they're intuitive to use. They have a shape. You play a them, you figure out how to use them. This one, you kind of have to know how to do makeup and um, really play around with it to be able to um, use it effectively and use one this one brush to do your whole eye makeup. So that's the drawback with this brush, even though it's so great in my opinion. I'll finish off with mascara and then grab the worker too. I guess I should do brows too, huh? So any questions before I go grab that brush? Any questions about um, any of the other brushes I showed in this video? 
definitely welcome. And then because this brush has such um, separation on it, I don't need to use my eyelash comb today. I just have it on my brush bar standard because I usually use it some way or another. Curious on buying one of what? Let me go through the comments. Is it the worker pro two? Which Worker Pro were you referring to? I think there's two and three. I th the only difference between those, I think, is undyed versus dyed goat hair, right? My Surat Large eye brush is being washed right now, so the shape wouldn't, or just washed right now, so the shape wouldn't be accurate to compare with the Hokoto WS1. Keep on you call it the WS5 for some reason. Let's go find my worker pros. Just kidding, I don't have the Worker Pro. I don't have the Pro set because it's been sold out. I wanted to get the set all at once. I do, I only have the Worker 2. So, sorry about that. Uh, Food Day Lover, what were you referring to in my thoughts on actually buying one, like a brush, the brush comb? Um, if you're interested, um, Vian Lau, if you're more in interested in the GS2, I can link a picture of it, I think. I mean, link a blog post I have of it. I think I have pictures of them with dimensions, and you can always compare that to the dimensions on the Worker Pro if you wanted more information on it. Brush comb. Um, the reason I haven't gotten one, and I did consider in having my car at one point, is because of well unnecessary friction to a hair in general so if you know about like how to take care of the hair on your head you're not supposed to brush your hair too much or like brushing when it's wet things like that because you can cause damage and split ends so i'm kind of the school of if it's not broken leave it alone so like for example this brush is god knows how many years old I can't say I've had any like snarls or knots in the hair, and this is one of the longer brushes I have. If you had something like the Chikuhodo P8, like the really big fluffy um, squirrel brush, maybe you would need that, or the Hokodo like monster powder brush, maybe you would need that. But as far as the brush combs go, if you watch the videos where they're making the brushes, they comb it through, and the purpose of combing is to remove loose or broken hairs. So for example, when I was doing this earlier of the brush, just this motion was enough to flick a hair, a loose hair, and make it go flying. So if you wanna remove loose or damaged hairs, like just doing this would be enough. You don't need to systematically sort through with a fine tooth comb like a brush comb would do. So that's where I am on brush combs. Okay. Yeah, I think brush combs are best left to the pros who make brushes and know how to use them. Yes, I was discussing earlier how I just ordered the entirety of the Chikuhodo Kazan set, the Honor series. Um, 
as uh, to reiterate what I said earlier, sorry for the people who have been watching. I've never been so excited by um, an entire set before because not only do I think it's a very well-rounded set, it has a large, medium, a small eye brush. Um, so I think that part of it is already really well-rounded and I would love to try them out. But also all the face brushes are really thoughtful and functional shapes. Hello. So because of, oh, don't worry, I'll just talk about it right now. You'll just hear it again. But because I think they're all really functional shapes and they're shapes that I know I would like to use. That's why I got the whole set rather than getting it piecemeal. So, and then none of the brushes are, well, foundation, brows, or lip brushes, which is why also the entire set is headed to me. So I'll play with those for a couple of weeks when I get them and then review them and definitely compare them to the two other Chikihoto lines, the Z series and the Takumi series. So yeah, I can't wait to make that video. But as far as my thoughts on Kazan Squirrel, I only have two Kazan Squirrel brushes and I think you know which brand they're from. They're from Hakuhodo. One of them is the really, um, really big eye brush or really small cheek brush, but it's the round one. And the other one is the very triangle pointed um, eye brush. I think both of them are featured in my top 10 Hakuhodo brush video. So if you want to see those two Kazan Squirrel brushes in action as kind of a primer, I would watch that video. It was the first one I filmed and it was on my phone. It's sideways, so I'm sorry about that. I do have the Kolinsky Shu Uramura 10. The Shu Uramura 10 is actually a mixture of Kolinsky and Sable. So the short version of it is kind of like not all rectangles are squares. Same thing with Kolinsky and Sable. Not all Sable is Kolinsky. So it has to be um, of certain specifications from the male winter coat of the mustelid to be considered Kolinsky. Everything else, including female coats, is Sable. So the Shu Uramura 10 is Kolinsky and Sable. But that one is a very, very thin brush compared to the Sue Devitt Eye Base brush. Uh, actually, I'll grab that because it's actually sitting on my shelf right now. So I was actually going to do a video on just Kolinsky petal eye brushes, but I ended up doing my favorite brushes instead. So here's the Sue Devitt eye base brush. And uh, shoo, 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 where is the... Oh, nope, just kidding. I have the 12 on my shelf. The 10 I would have to pull out of brush storage. This is the 12, so it's just a scaled up version of the 10. So the 10 looks exactly like this, just a little shorter and a little less thick. Um, it's definitely not built to be as fluffy and as thick or as dense as the Sue Devin. And the 12 is also a mixture of Kolinsky Sable. Okay. Hakuhodo 5524. Yes, I'm so sad that I was not able to get the same shape of that eye brush in Canadian Squirrel. Waited too long on it and now they no longer manufacture it. Yeah. So here's so the thickest I would actually I actually had this WS1 lumped in with the rest of these Kolinsky paddle brushes. Um, but let me see the thickest one I have here. None of them are comparable to the Sue Devitt brush, obviously, which is why I think if you want something like this, you'll have to have it custom made by Takeda. If you want the specifications on it, send me a message and I'd be happy to take measurements and send them to you if you want to have a custom made one. I think that'll be your only option for this. So yeah, I'll probably wait a couple more minutes, clean up what's in front of me. If I don't get any more questions, I will take my leave. But I think uh, this kind of 
comparison would be better done as a blog post because they're not moving around everywhere or dropping all over the place. So that would probably be a blog post, one of which is long overdue. <laughs> The, fifth, the shoe rumor 15 is, as I, if I recall, one of the only pure Kolinsky sable brushes, and that one is quite the brush. I do have a lot of brushes. This is only a fraction of them. And my mistake is I keep on showing the same one over and over. Since we're talking Kolinsky, which is my favorite shape? Hands down the WS1. I would say WS1, no, yes. WS1 followed by the Shu Uramura number 15. The number 15 is a scaled up version of the 12 but more rounded. So actually I would say that one is the closest to the Sue Debit because it has enough thickness and size at the ferrule that it can be used as a cheek brush, a contour brush and a highlight brush. So that one I actually use as a face brush rather than as an eye brush. Also discontinued. So unless you can find it on eBay, you're gonna have to have Takeda make it. I'm not, I haven't looked into the Surratt um, brushes as much as I should have. I think their concealer brush may be made of Kolinsky, maybe it's made of Weasel. Let's see. Oh, I guess it's not available anymore in Sephora. Interesting. But there's been, I guess, a lot of upheaval in the manufacturing side of Fude recently, why we've been seeing interesting hairs like Silver Fox introduced. Blue Mercury does not tell us what kind of brush this is. Okay, anyways. Kolinsky for face brushes. Um, I have two Kolinsky face brushes, but they're paddles. They're not, they're not the most effective if they're flat, but I also don't prefer flat foundation brushes in general. I prefer very thick ones with rounded edges. I've seen a couple. Uh, one of them I think is Christie's or it's La Femme de Dette who has a custom Takeda um, Kolinsky face brush. I would love to order one of those one day, but I keep putting it off because there's so many other tasty things that come out first. So that's definitely a brush that I'm interested in. The thing is though, I don't think it would be a great idea unless you were a serious collector and wanted a Kolinsky foundation face brush just to be able to say that you have one. I think the Kolinsky Shu Uemura number 15 is about as large as I would go and still be able to justify it. And that guy was already pricey at something like $250. So I haven't put an inquiry into the into Takeda to see if they can make that brush again and how much it would cost, but I would prepare myself for sticker shock before I asked them. I do know there was an email sent out by CG Japan, uh, not CG Japan, uh, Fude Japan, uh, Toshiya-san, who um, acts as like a third party shipper. He did mention that there are brush companies other than the Kumano ones that we all know of. And in that one, he did show what looked like a flat top Kalinsky brush. I may eventually get around to ordering that set, but how I imagine it would be would be like a flat top synthetic brush almost because Kolinsky has um, that snap back like synthetic brushes do. So that's what I'm expecting of that brush. 
theoretically. This is all in theory. Someone else was asking about a round Kolinsky foundation, and I, hmm. Round Kolinsky foundation. Well, the problem you run potentially with round Kolinsky foundation is pokiness. Because even if you have the softest psychoho hair, if you pack it really, really densely, like for example, this brush, and you have to pack it really densely to get a flawless finish and good blend. So considering the factors that would need to go into the making of that brush, and the fact that Kolinsky is already less soft than psychoho, I think you might end up with a brush that would be intolerable for somebody with even mildly sensitive or dry skin. So the reason why Kolinsky flat brushes work well is because they work like paint brushes. They spread the product evenly. So then you get a nice even coating layer everywhere. And then you go in with another brush and then you buff it out. That's really good if you have a lot of hyperpigmentation that you need to cover. So it's like slathering spackle on and then blending it out. And I need some water. All right, thank you for watching and joining me today. <laughs> Do you have any questions for me? If you want to enter them now, I can answer them right away. Otherwise, I'm about to log off. So I'll give you a couple minutes to get your questions in if you want to get your excitement over of catching my live chat finally. You're welcome. Oh, and for those that are curious, I don't know if my sound quality is good enough, but I use this Samsung Go mic. So if I need to upgrade my my sound, please tell me. Okay, um, I've already answered that question twice, so I'm going to make you watch the replay of this video. It's somewhere in the middle of the video and then towards the end when I'm answering questions. Yeah, so Dahi, Dahi, um, that's already been ans answered twice. I kind of touch on it in the middle of the video, and then I go into more depth about why I'm so excited about those Kazan Squirrel brushes in the end after I'm done doing all my makeup and I'm just, just talking about it. So sorry about that. Feel free to scrub through the video, but look for that. Okay, thank you for watching. Bye.